friends, I have a really, really fun layout that is part two of Hannah's Scrappy Bin. And this is a layout that is using my stash. <laughs> and I'm going to use that Pinterest mood board from the beginning of the intro to pick out my papers, which I already did. So now you're just going to see me make the layout. So if you're curious about what my thinking process was on picking the papers, you can check out part one. It should already be up there. I'll make sure below in the link or in the info, there'll be a link to that. But I thought I would do them separate because it took a while to pick the papers, but I wanted to explain why I did it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm using Wilton's food coloring gel as a watercolor. Uh, if you're new to my channel, this is a product that I like to use because I had it, and I really don't use it to color stuff. I mean, I really don't. I used to bake a lot and so now I don't and I've had a whole bunch of unused ones so I really like the color and um, so I just keep I keep them in my scrap supplies and I just use them that way so these I am pretty sure are not archival safe or like acid free but to me I really don't care because uh, I should have, most, for the most part, I usually have enough paper layers that it really isn't, doesn't bother me that it's not going to last, you know, like thousands, like hundreds of years. So, yeah. I'm okay with that. It looks pretty, and I guess to me that's what matters. And I do have, a, most of my photos, I have a, another digital copy so, like I said, it, that's not too big of a deal. So, what you're seeing me do is I like to use a paintbrush to add watercolors, paints, usually to my layouts. Sometimes I'll do it using other forms, like my hand, a credit card type of object, or like my, my spatula. But I like the feel of the paintbrush, I guess. And so I just used clear gesso over the white cardstock, and then I'm just painting on with not too much water, but enough to make it drip, and then, as you've seen, I blotted it. So I wasn't sure at first if I wanted to use regular modeling paste or, like, something clear, or if I wanted anything stenciled, but I really wanted some another texture. So I decided to grab... Ranger multi matte media medium and it's really like a thicker glue but you can use it on a stencil and it will keep its shape decently well it takes quite a while to dry especially with a stencil so I like to let it sit for a couple of hours before I try to do something else, but I really like the way that it this turned out, especially because it dries, for the most part, pretty clear. So you see a little bit of texture, but it's not too much. And I really wanted these colors to be the focal point behind my photo. I'm going to be using a photo of the ocean, and it's a gorgeous picture, but I want some more I want the bright colors to really show now one thing I've noticed with this gel because I'm using a food coloring gel a little bit of that color does kind of come up into the 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 ranger multimedia um, so that kind of that color is a little bit more vibrant over top as opposed to like just on the regular card sack. So, so yeah. So that was my thought process why I picked that instead of just a white 
modeling piece, which would have looked cool too, but I really wanted to see those colors. They're so vibrant and it's so pretty. That turned out amazing. I mean, when I first started this, I wasn't even sure because I'm using a lot of scraps. And even the paper that you see for my background, that was from a Scraptastic kit a while ago. And it's Feathers. I believe it's Webster's Pages. I don't know what the name of the paper is called. But it came in a Scraptastic kit. And I just have not found... A I've tried to use it a whole bunch of times. And I'm like... How am I going to use this? But I really liked the yellow tint to it from the feathers. So it worked out perfectly to be a border around my white cardstock so that the page ends without having to draw lines on it. So here's all the papers that I had picked out. And there's my photo that I, I print my photos at home, if anybody's curious. Uh, if I really had maybe a specialty paper or like photo that I wanted to use, I might, you know, like do something like, per yes, like send, you know, I probably wouldn't do Walgreens. So I probably could because I think I have one down not too far away from where I live. But So I'm just going to use a lot of these smaller papers to make layers. And I'm using that neon blue ink and I think I'm also using the color box cat eye pigment inks together with my edger so everything's going to be edged in like a blue color it's like a bluish green teal color so it really will help bring out the colors in the photos but help everything feel uniform because all of these papers are from different collections there's a few that are from some of the same collections but a lot of them are different so I really want it to feel like they belong together and my papers based on certain colors from that mood board it really is going to help tie everything together I love how this turned out so I do have a <laughs> have a harder time because these scraps obviously are not all the same it's not like having a six by six pad yeah so it takes a little while to like figure out how I'm gonna get everything to look really cool and look nice and where I want my lines to be because it, especially on a picture like this I think feel like it's really important to not have lines completely through the middle of my photo because I want you to notice this long beach the ocean and the the sky you know is across the whole picture pretty much I want those to be visible and if you have a paper in the back that is straight down the middle it can kind of block how you're seeing the photo too even if it's very subtle of a thing I really was trying to be like that paper particularly because it's not very long or like thick you know it's thin but I thought it worked better going straight up and down than it would have just you know in the middle so I really have been on a vellum kick lately <laughs> and this vellum is perfect and I kind of move it around a little bit because I'm trying to figure out if where I want my photo where I want the vellum piece because it's blue on one part and then more like sand color on the other and in the end I decided that I wanted the blue near the blue section and then the more sandy color near the yellow and this I think is at the point where I'm starting to think maybe I want to have my embellishments match those three colors and most of my embellishments I use the poolside collection I think I think all most of the stuff I use embellishment wise is from that collection so that is another way that I'm gonna keep everything kind of unified here I am taking just some string that I got in a kit and I'm gonna color it the colors that I used on my layout so that I can build those color 
clusters in the colors that I wanted. And it works out really nice. And because these, this is a, you know, food coloring, it's a dye, it really seeps in and you get those bright colors. I mean, the colors on those are bright and they're gorgeous. And I just love color. If there's color in it, oh, it's like I have a really hard time doing layouts that don't have a lot of color. <laughs> I think that's why I've moved less, you know, more towards more colorful and less towards the vintagey look because I just get kind of bored with that. I think I missed me putting those on pop dots. I put it on a pop dot and then I think I ended up using like a chipboard piece and I have the multimedia underneath and then I have to add glossy accents but I'm trying to hold something over top of it to kind of glue it in place. That piece that I just added says June on it and it has yellow. So it's going to go up near that sticker that says some of the best memories are made in flip-flops, which is perfect for the beach because actually at the beach, you can't even wear flip-flops like this beach. It's hard, probably really hard for you to see, but the, because of where this beach is, this is on the North shore and the North shore is known to have bigger waves. And this beach in particular is the beach where they do a lot of the surfing competitions in the winter time and this is where the bonsai pipeline is and that is pretty much where the surfers can go through the waves in the winter can be so big that and so high that the surfers can just ride through the ra the wave you know and have the water go over top of them so the the sand there is really, really thick, like coarse, and it's almost like shells, like a whole bunch of really, really, really tiny shells that make this beach. And it's really cool because you can find beach glass, you can find a lot of like small shell pieces. It's just really cool. And the water there is gorgeous. I mean, I did not add any filters to this picture. I promise you. It did not need it at all. And this day, it was semi-cloudy. So, it just made for the, the light to be perfect. And I just took this with my iPhone. I didn't even use, like, a special camera. Sometimes, just the iPhone. I had the newer one. So, even with that... I feel like it's just, it's amazing sometimes. I can't believe how good the camera is on that. <laughs> I promise you it even looks better in person, even though that picture is amazing. <laughs> so as I was talking about all the beachness, I am just building layers. And I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put my third cluster because I really want to stick with having like three clusters since, and since I knew I wanted to have a cluster for each color, I'm trying, I was just trying to figure out where I wanted to put the third one because the blues are all where that here is. And I just used some of, some more of the watercolors that I made on that. That is a Dear Lizzie watercolor word so they're made I think it's just a watercolor paper that's die cut it out in her handwriting but it's pretty anyway so it worked well and I'm pretty sure almost everything on here is poolside except for I think I add a couple of sticker there's one that says happiness here and I think that's from the Maggie Holmes but I add that later. So that's like way ahead. Here I'm going to add that. It just looks so cute. I really love how this turned out. It's turned out so fun. It makes me want to go back to the beach right now. <laughs> it really does. I hope it makes you guys want to go to the beach. And I added just a little bit more of the colors around the clusters just to kind of really make it pop the 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 colors like pop and everything and it's just fun and 
I've been watching Missy too much too. She adds, she just keeps adding color. It makes me want to keep adding color when I watch her layouts. Here is the sheet, the package that has all the wood pieces and it has some enamel dots and stuff. And so I used quite a few of those since the colors in, in those worked really well. I'm going to be sad when those are done. I might have to just get another pack. I added pop dot underneath that lifeguard. And what was really cool, you can't obviously see it in the photo, but pretty much where that lifeguard shack is, there was a lifeguard shack. It's, it was up in, because the waves there, I mean, almost even in the, even in the summertime when the waves are really low, it's still, you can't really swim much in there unless you're a really good swimmer. But my kids don't care. We'll just go to the beach and play in the sand. And as long, if they can put their toes in for a minute, they're fine. I wanted to have another, like, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to name the layout. And I end up going with Paradise Here. And I thought it looked really cool to have the, those silver, even though gold would have looked really great. I thought the silver was a nice change. And... I thought it looked really cool with part of the title up at the top and then part of the title up near the bottom. So it kind of takes those two clusters and helps form them together. Yep, here's that happiness here because at the beach, I mean, it's just happy. Unless you get sand in your eyes and then it's not so happy. <laughs> that happens to my son quite a bit. I think I was trying to figure out. So here's the end. I can't believe that. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any ideas for inspiration for how to pick scraps out. And I'll, I'm going to be doing some more of these. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great week. Bye.